Hey guys, Growth Camel EDV. Um, most of you know kind of how I do business. Um, I buy a bike and then I ride it and find the things that I don't like. And then I try and make parts to fix that. Um, so one of the, it's not a huge complaint. It's just kind of an annoying thing. It's not like it's a fatal flaw of the bike, uh, but the gauge cluster shakes like it's trying to escape the bike. Like when I started riding this bike off road, uh, down the washboard or just uh, like a rocky road, I, I honestly thought that somewhere along the, the way in the, the assembly line that somebody forgot to put some bolts in the dash. It is like crazy how much it vibrates. Uh, the headlight also does the same thing. When you're riding at night on a rough road, it's like a strobe light, it's crazy. Um, and they're actually bolted together on the same bracket. And that bracket is rubber mounted um, and just moves a ton. Uh, so wanted to make a, uh, a bracket, wanted to come up with a fix for that. So the gauge cluster is what moves the most. And these are what I call the ABH rods. ABH stands for anti-bobblehead. You know the things that people put on dashes and they bounce around with the spring? Bobblehead. Um, we're tying into point at the bottom of the cluster or the bottom of the, the headlight assembly, and then the top of the headlight assembly, and then we're tying those points into the GPS bar. Now the GPS bar itself is pretty steady. Um, it's not, it doesn't move around very much. It, it gets a lot of support uh, with side to side because of the windscreens attached to it. There's a little bit of flex in here, but when everything's bolted together, it's, it's pretty minimal. So by tying into this and then the other uh, the other two points, uh, we've got six points of attachment now for the gauge cluster, and it's still rubber mounted. It's not like, you know, it still moves. It's not, uh, it's not rigid mounted. We don't have to worry about uh, vibration killing the electronics or anything like that, um, but it is much, much steadier. And same with the headlight. So the headlight and the gauge cluster are on the same bracket and they do this as you, as you ride down the road. So pretty straightforward install on this. Uh, maybe, maybe take you half hour, 45 minutes if you're um, kind of doing it at a leisurely pace. And not much for tools. You need a four mil Allen and a five mil Allen and a four, five, that's it. Four mil Allen, five mil Allen. Um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is take the windscreen off. Uh, there's four bolts here. They're four mil Allens. And we can set this aside. So at the end of the GPS crossbar, we've got two bolts and they're five mil Allens. Just be careful taking them out. There's a little uh, copper, or sorry, brass um, spacer here. We're gonna to come to the front of the bike here. These are M5s as well. And these are into rubber um, well nuts like these. So not such an issue taking them out, but when you go to reinstall them, you can't put too much pressure on them. So on each side, there's one bolt here. There's one down there. And they're both five mil Allens as well. When you go to remove the gauge cluster to get out of the way, you can't just pull it backwards. It actually has to come up and off, there's a couple of pegs here that are sort of a hook and they, they drop in. So you need to come up and then out. And you can set that to the side. If you have metal bark busters or hand guards, just make sure when you're turning the bars back and forth that you don't crush the gauge cluster with the bark buster. And we're gonna loosen, actually take these bolts right out. 
all four of them, the top the, and the bottom. So the top ones are pretty easy to get with uh, an Allen bit on a ratchet. The bottom ones are a little bit trickier. Usually you can just crack them with the ratchet and then just use the Allen bit to do them by hand. And again, these are the, the rubber weld nuts, so you don't want to put too much pressure on them. So this is a little bit trickier and it's going to be a bit of a challenge to shoot this. Um, so again, the five mil Allen is the way to do this. Um, the bit, you can put this on, but there's not enough room in here to get the ratchet handle. So the section just before the socket on these is a quarter inch, um, and that's pretty standard. So if you use a, a quarter inch wrench, you can grab that and break this loose. It's easier to do this um, one hand from the top and then one run from the bottom. So that's pretty much all we need there. And now I can spin this out by hand. So it's gonna focus on the fork is what it is. Um, but you'll be able to see me working here. So we can install the rods now. Um, the set screws go towards the front of the bike uh, so they're not visible while you're, while you're riding. Um, on the bottom here, there is the bracket and the rod. So this bracket is facing towards the rider and then the rod, just this offset here. There's a detail on the dash where this sits. So the best way to start with these is to make sure that the set screw is backed out enough that when you try to slide the rod through here, it's not going to get hung up. Uh, we're going to pull the rod out and slide this on like that. And then we can put it back on. We'll go over to the other side and do the same thing. Like so, I'm gonna put the two uh, five mil bolts in here and the rods are um, can still float on the rod back and forth, but it just keeps everything uh, retained and not flopping around. So we're gonna get the button head bolt started here and get the rods attached uh, to the assembly. Just be aware that without the bolts in here, this thing really flops around. Uh, so when you go to push these bolts in, you're basically pushing the headlight away from the bolt and um, the bolts might not start. So you actually have to push this in to get the bolts to start. So just be aware of that. Otherwise you'll, you'll fight uh, with these. And like I said, they are the well nuts, they're the rubber. So you have to spin the bolt in. If you put pressure on them to start them, you can push these right through. And I'm pointing at this one um, just as an example, but that's what's behind all the mounting points on the headlight as well. So again, the, the socket um, Allen is kind of the best because you can just sort of spin it in my hand. And we're just putting these in loose just so uh, they're actually retained, but they're nowhere near tight. Flip over to the other side here. And we're gonna do the same. Just make sure when you do these that you have the uh, rod slid on the bar kind of all the way out. We've got that started. So we're gonna to go to the bottom and do the same thing. Again, this is kind of tough to do because the camera's right where I wanna be. Uh, I'll just start them by hand. So when you're doing this, if you do one hand from the top and one from the bottom, you can put your finger on the back of the socket to keep it from falling out. And then you can put the wrench on the other side to tighten it. 
And if you have an Allen wrench that actually fits in here, if the length of the Allen wrench, if it's compact enough that you can actually swing it in there, then that would be the way to do it. And over and tighten this one with the wrench. Move the gauge cluster out of the way. Go ahead and tighten this one. And you don't have to be super crazy tight with those. Um, if you do, you're likely to damage something. That. I'll just make sure I've got the GPS rods. So we can grab the dash and just be aware of those two hooks. We gotta come up and back on. The T-handle is the best bet here. You can use an Allen wrench, it just is a little bit annoying. Um, even the ratchet with the, the socket bit, you just need to be careful. Like I said, you don't put too much pressure on those well nuts. If you have this up too high, you're gonna have a real miserable time getting those in. So just push it down, make sure the holes are lined up. On the back side, so right here is the back of the well nut. So when you're tightening these, you can take your finger and just put it there. Um, there's nothing really keeping the well nuts uh, other than the friction with the, the rubber body. Um, there's nothing other than that keeping them from spinning in the housing. So if you can just put a finger on them to keep them from moving. I've got this side that I'm showing you right now is actually not bad. For whatever reason, the, uh, the right side of the bike that one likes to uh, likes to spin, so I have to put my finger on it to get it in. Earlier when I said you needed a, a four and a five for Allen's, you actually need a three as well. I forgot about the set screws here. Um, I'm just gonna put a dab of blue Loctite on them so they don't rattle loose. And they don't need to be crazy tight either. Just, I've, I've actually ridden the bike without the set screws in there and it's not, uh, it's not really an issue. Um, they don't tend to move around very much. The fit on the clamps, especially with the powder coat, is, is pretty close to the diameter of the uh, GPS rod. And we can put our windscreen back on. So I mentioned the parts being handmade for a reason. Uh, every once in a while I get emails from people who are unhappy that uh, the part that they got isn't absolutely perfect. And I don't mean, I don't mean not perfect as in flawed or it doesn't work or whatever. It's, um, you know, we're, we're not a big shop. I have uh, a bunch of small local shops that I use for, uh, for water jet cutting and powder coating and um, you know, the welding. I've got a guy that does all my TIG welding and it's all, this shop has three people working at it and this shop has five people. And then, you know, the welding shop, there's one, one full-time guy and he's got a helper. So these parts aren't CNC welded. They're not, you know, identical clones of every other one. They're 98% the same part to part to part, um, but they're not, you know, they're not machine made, they're handmade. Literally um, the, uh, the, the rods here for the, uh, for the brace was cut on my bandsaw. I sat in front of the bandsaw, measured every one of them out. Literally every piece was hand cut by me in the shop, was hand bent on the hydraulic press um, and then checked in the jig and, you know, tweaked that last a half a degree, their hand fit in the jig and then their hand TIG welded. So if you're looking for absolute perfection and you like are looking for um, Honda, Yamaha uh, kind of 
level manufacturing, you're not going to get it from us. Um, it's, it's just not, uh, it's not possible with the tools that we have. And, and honestly, I don't want to, uh, I'm not looking to scale the business to that size. Um, I'm quite happy with, with having a small shop that's, you know, I, I make the parts and like I've literally touched every single one of the parts uh, that you guys get when you order them. So uh, I'm happy with that. Hopefully you are too. Uh, if you have any questions about the anti bobblehead uh, ABH setup for the MHA 710 Ray, uh, let me know. Info at camel-adv. Thanks for watching.